Good day. So, ko continue tayo with integration. And you might notice that for the previous lessons, ang ini-integrate natin or ang kinukuhanan natin ng antiderivatives na types ng functions ay yung mga pwede nating gamitan ng power rule or kung nag involve sila ng trigonometric functions ay familiar yung itsura nila. Meaning, parang binigyan tayo ng derivative at dahil alam natin yung itsura ng function na yon na derivative siya, kaya nating balikan kung ano yung function na siya yung derivative o yung anti-derivative niya. Hindi naman lahat, no, nang may encounter natin na functions na kailangan natin kunin yung integral or anti-derivative ay familiar sila enough na mababalikan lang natin kung masasabi natin or masasabi natin agad kung anong function yung parang parent niya, yung pinanggalingan niya na pag kinuha natin yung derivative, makukuha natin yung given natin. Or hindi rin, hindi rin naman lahat ng functions na ma-encounter natin, pwede natin gamitan agad ng power rule. Kasi din, in general, integration is a more difficult operation than differentiation. So, for this quarter, we'll look at a series of techniques na pwede natin gamitin for particular functions para makuha yung kanilang antiderivative or yung kanilang integral. Kumbaga, we are expanding yung families ng functions natin na pwede nating kuhanin yung kanilang antiderivatives. And let's start with our first technique. This is called U substitution or integration by substitution. So U substitution is another term. And let's start with an example. So rather than ibibigay ko yung reason kung bakit siya nag-work, papakita muna ako na example to demonstrate paano siya gamitin. Tsaka natin i-discuss kung paano siya nag-work. So, let's say we want to find the antiderivative of the function uh, y equals x squared times the square root of x cubed plus 2. Looking at it, pwede nating isipin kung ano yung pwede nating gawin para kunin yung antiderivative niya. Gagamit ba tayo ng power rule? Yun lang naman yung alam natin gamitin so far eh. Pag naka-encounter tayo ng mga ganitong klaseng functions. So, you might think no, na baka pwede kong i-distribute yung x squared sa loob ng radical. So, try natin yun. Distribute natin yung x squared dun sa loob ng radical. So, our expression could be equal to uh, the square root of x to the 7th plus 2x to the 4th. So, nag-distribute tayo ng, well, papasok muna natin yung x squared sa loob ng radical. Magiging x to the 4th siya. Then, distribute natin siya sa terms. And we could get this. Now, looking at it, alam natin na hindi naman natin pwedeng i-distribute yung square root eh, over sums. So, hindi tayo makakagamit ng power rule. So, essentially, we are stuck. So, ano yung pwede natin gawin? Yung technique na to, yung integration by substitution, it works by letting a variable represent an inner function. In this case, yung radicand, yung expression sa loob ng radical. So, in this technique na explain natin later on, we need to identify a function or an expression na parang nasa loob ng isa pang function. Parang ganun yung ating approach. Parang ganun yung hinahanap natin roughly. Naghahanap tayo ng expression or function na nasa loob ng isa pang expression or function. So since yung x cubed plus 2 nasa loob siya ng radical symbol, siya yung radicand, siya yung napili natin na ire-represent ng isang variable. And yung default natin na variable ay u. So let u be equal to x cubed plus 2. Ang next step natin na gagawin ay kukunin natin yung derivative ng u na yan. So du over dx, that's equal to 3x squared. Next na gagawin natin ay tingnan natin yung left side, du over dx. We know from Math 5 that du over dx is an operator, no? which means kukunin natin yung derivative ni u. But here we'll treat it as a fraction and we'll multiply dx sa both sides, sort of. So we'll get du is equal to 3x squared times dx. So what are we accomplishing here? Nakahanap tayo ng values ng variables na pwede nating ipalit dun sa ating original expression. So we are substituting our variable from x papuntang u. So now, using these variables, i-rewrite natin yung ating integral. Simulan natin by rearranging yung factors. So, the integral of x squared times the square root of x cubed plus 2, pwede ko siyang isulat na the integral of the square root of x cubed plus 2 times x squared dx. Okay, so, wala pang nangyayari, no? 
But what I want us to note here is that titingin tayo sa taas, du is equal to 3x squared dx. Dito sa baba, meron akong x squared dx. Ang goal natin is ilipat natin yung x variable sa puntang u. So that includes dx, kailangan natin madala kay du. If du is equal to 3x squared dx at meron ako ditong x squared dx, that means kailangan ko ng 3 na factor. Pero binago ko yung expression ko, nag-introduce ako ng bagong factor na 3. Kailangan ko siyang, in a way, matanggal yung effect niya. So we could multiply one third sa unahan. So that they will cancel each other out and will still end up with the same expression that we had at the start. Now, looking at it, alam natin na yung u natin ay equal sa x cubed plus 2 at yung du natin na equal sa 3x squared dx. So now we are ready to apply yung sinasabi nating substitution. So observe natin, no? Yung du natin equal siya sa 3x squared dx. Tapos yung integral natin, meron siyang 3x squared dx sa kanan, sa right side. Also, yung ating radicand, yung x cubed plus 2, this is equal kay u. Yun yung una nating define na let u is equal to x cubed plus 2. So we're now ready to apply our substitution. This integral is equivalent to 1 third times the integral of square root of u du. Pinasok na natin yung u at yung du dun sa integral. At in this form, pwede na natin siyang gamitan agad ng power rule. Kasi this is just equal to u raised to 1 half. And we know how to take the antiderivative of that. So this is equivalent to 1 third times u raised to 3 halves times the reciprocal, 2 thirds. Of course, plus c, which is now equivalent to 2 over 9, u raised to 3 halves plus c. So, nakahanap na tayo ng integral niya, ng antiderivative niya. We need one more step. It's called back substitution, meaning ibabalik natin yung variable natin from u to x. Kasi x yung given. It dapat x din yung final answer. And since u is equal to x cubed plus 2, substitute lang natin siya. This is equal to 2 over 9 times the quantity x cubed plus 2 raised to 3 halves plus c. And this will be our final answer. So, box natin siya. Okay. So, that's how you do no? integration using substitution or u substitution for short kasi yung default na variable na ginagamit ay u. So, you should now proceed na pag-usapan kung bakit nag-work yung technique na yun. Ayun, let's answer this question. Why does this work? So, simulan natin by recalling yung chain rule for integration. So, ito siya, no? So, intay natin magsulat, then balikan natin unti-unti. So, let's say meron tayong dalawang functions, f of x at g of x. Si g of x, it's differentiable in its domain. So, we can always take its derivative. Si f of x naman, it should be differentiable at least in the range of g of x. Kasi ang chain rule, ginagamit natin siya if we have a composite function na f of g of x. No? So, g is differentiable dun sa domain niya, and f is differentiable for all the values of g na ibabato sa kanya. If we take the derivative of the composite function f of g of x, this is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So, this is a lesson from Math 5 on how to take the derivative of a composite function, and we should be very familiar with this. So, since you are dealing with antiderivatives with integrals, i-reverse -re natin ngayon yung position nila. Okay, so reversing the process, we could say that if we take the integral of f prime of g of x times g prime of x, so kukunin natin yung integral ng derivative ng composite function, dapat babalik tayo dun sa composite function natin. So, this should be equal to f of g of x. Of course, may pwede nang pumasok na constant of integration. So, nasan dito yung u substitution? Sabi natin kanina, sa pag-identify ng u, we are sort of looking for a function that is inside another function or another operation. And in this case, yung pinaka-clue natin, yung hint natin, is that si g of x nasa loob siya ni f prime, ni derivative of f. So, kumbaga, siya yung inner function na ina-assign natin dun sa ating variable u. So, if we assign a variable to the inner function g of x, so let u be equal to g of x, 
yung isa pa nating kailangan palitan ay yung dx. Kailangan natin siyang gawing du. And we'll make the observation na yung dx may katabi siyang g prime of x. Eh. Diba? It's f prime g of x times g prime of x derivative nung inner function katabi ni dx. Kaya natin kinukuha si du over dx para makuha yung derivative ni g at magkaroon tayo ng g prime. So du over dx, this is equal to g prime of x. And we can treat si du over dx as a fraction. Iaakit natin yung dx sa right side. And we'll get the expression that du is equal to g prime of x dx. So ito na yung basis ng mga substitution na gagawin natin na meron tayong u sa loob at kailangan natin ng g prime of x na imumultiply sa dx at yun yung tatawagin nating du. And now, our rule after doing the substitution will be, it will be the integral of f prime of u na kasi nag-substitute na tayo eh. f prime of u du. But what's that? That's just equal to f of u plus c. Kasi naka-variable u lang tayo and this is just yung definition natin ng antiderivative. But that is equal to f of g of x plus c. So we can use this technique if na-observe natin na pwede nating i-represent yung given as a composite function. And the idea is, in doing so, ma-reduce natin yung given na function sa atin to something more familiar. Yung ginamitan natin ng integration ng first quarter. So it could be a power rule or a simpler trigonometric integral or an exponential function na mas simple or an LN alam natin yung gagawin. So essentially, we're trying to rewrite it into a form that is easier for us to use. So after this video, we'll take a look at several examples kasi this needs practice. Eh. So I hope you'll join me in the next video and salamat sa pakikinig.